Welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast. Proud to be the world's number one community for brilliant childcare leaders. Each episode will feature interviews with the brightest minds in the childcare industry to guide you into becoming a smarter business leader. Our hosts have opened 10 schools while raising five children. They are certified business coaches and are the top selling childcare business book authors of all time. This episode is sponsored by Arleaf Childcare Insurance. Give Blake a call at 972-232-2258 to get a free quote on childcare business insurance today. Let's welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast, our hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. Welcome to episode 24 of the Child Care Genius Podcast. Host Brian and Carol Dupre. So excited to have you guys here today. And guess what? We're still in Jamaica. As you're <laughs> listening to this podcast, we're releasing it. And we are actually in Jamaica right now. I'm uh Yeah, and we'll be coming home in January from palm trees and beach to snow, which uh, is always hard. That's always tough leaving. Leaving white sand and coming home the white snow. That's never never my favorite thing. But um we're excited for this podcast and we're thinking about um you guys. So this week is week three of couples month for the child care genius podcast. All guests this month will be couples building their child care business together. And we've had some amazing guests. We've we've loved every minute of each other of it. Yeah, it's not easy working close with your spouse or business partner. Right. So we wanted to highlight some different couples that are working their business together. The first two weeks, we had two couples that were both full-time in the business. This week, we segue to something different where the uh, the husband's involved, but he's not involved very much. He has a full-time job outside the business, but he still does work a couple hours a week in the business doing financials and uh, some of the strategic planning. So we thought it would be interesting to have a different a uh, couple perspective in here. So we're together, Carol and I are together 24-7, 365. We work together in three different businesses. We were very intertwined and meshed. And we figured out how to work together out for a long period of time. Uh, so we love coaching other partners on how they could work together. We have a lot of fun doing so. So our guests on the podcast today are Jennifer and Noah Smith from Pennsylvania. They are fairly new owners and have recently expanded to their second location, which is exciting. Uh, they're an amazing couple, and we know you're going to get a lot out of this episode. Let's get Noah and Jennifer on the line. Hey, Noah and Jennifer, welcome to Child Care Genius Podcast. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Doing great, thanks. Well, we are recording this for Maine, as you guys know, and where are you guys located in? We're in Pennsylvania in the Pocono Mountains, uh, sort of in between Philadelphia and New York. Pocono Mountains, beautiful up there. I was just up visiting your schools last month and uh, got a little snow up there when I was up there. And it's, it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. How long have you guys lived up there? How long have you been here? Uh, like 30, 31 years. 31 years. So how long have you been in the child care business? I have been in the child care business since 2010, so we're in, so about 12 years. 12 years. So you've been in a little while, mm -hmm. but you're recently new owners of child care businesses, so you're new to the ownership side of it. Correct. Yeah. Yep. All right. So about well, good. Two, years for two, me. Years. two years for me, <laughs> much more for her. Two years for you. And, and what, what's your line of work, Noah? What do you do? So uh, I'm a nurse by trade. So I'm a nurse practitioner. Um, I have several other companies that I run, um, car detailing, um, health coaching, and a few things like that. But my main focus right now when I'm not at work is, is helping her uh, grow our daycare business. Awesome. It's nice that you guys work together for sure. Yeah. So can you tell us um, how you got into the child care business? Um, well, I went or to into the ownership part of into the, the ownership of it. Okay. Um, I was an assistant director uh, previously to being an owner for almost 10 years. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. I knew what I was doing um, from the only thing I really wasn't familiar with was the billing. 
but as far as licensing and compliance and all that stuff, regulations, I knew it in and out. And I figured why work for someone when I can work for myself? Um, and Noah and I talked about it and he joked with me and he said, well, if you can find one, we'll buy one. And uh, a week later, I found one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was by pure luck, to be honest with you, because there was not many, um, especially during COVID. And we got lucky and he was like, okay. <laughs> and we did it. <laughs> Yeah, See, I, I don't call that luck. I call that opportunity Eight. and the door opened up and you yeah. were smart enough to take it. Yeah. It was scary. It was definitely scary because I had self-doubts. I was like, oh my gosh, can I really do this? And I cried the first week. I was like, do I really want to do this? <laughs> um, but it was the initial hump. And then it was like a relief because again, it's like, oh my gosh, I am not working for somebody. I am working for myself. And I think being in childcare for so long, you kind of learn. And I was in the middle, you know, I, I was an employee and I worked in the office as an assistant director for many years. So I saw both sides. So I kind of had the perspective of, well, this is what I want different for myself and my employees because I knew what wasn't going well and I knew what I wanted to change. So that was huge. I, I definitely had, a, you know, a going in, I had thoughts of this is what I, what needs to be done differently as far as even like retention for employees. Like you got to treat your employees right. Right. Cause you want them to stay and little tiny things like that, that, you know, I just had that heads up and I was like, this is what I'm definitely going to do differently. So it was definitely, it, it was, it was a leap of faith, but I did it and we're doing great. So yeah. I'm glad I did it. No, what did you think when she came to you a week later and said, if I was cool. She had been talking about wanting to run her own center for as long as I've known her, but it was kind of like a pipe dream to her. I don't think she ever actually saw herself doing it. And so during COVID, you know, um, the school that she was working at closed down. She had an opportunity to take a job in pharmaceutical work and she thought that she was going to love it, paid her a lot more money. She was, she was enjoying it for a little bit, but ultimately came back and said, you know, um, I'm not happy. Like I, I want to go back with the kids. And we had a whole conversation where, you know, the things that we wanted for our life, I'm like working in that position she was in, wasn't going to bring us the things we wanted. So I said, it's really the only way you're going to do it. So when she came back and said, I found a center, I was like, are you serious? Like, is this something you really want to do? And when she said, yes, I said, we'll make the offer. And we did, and they accepted it. And then it was very quickly, well, now we have to pay for this. So then <laughs> that's when I started, you know, going to work myself and doing what I do, which was getting the funding together, figuring out the finances and just making the deal happen. And, and we were able to do that. So it worked out. Well, that's awesome. And that was only a year and a half ago. Is that right? Almost two years, almost two years ago, but yeah. Two years. In April, in April will be two years. Yeah. And I want to say... It was probably about two years ago around this time that I had actually found the center. Um, so, I mean, it did take a few months to get everything together, well, but. Quick tangent, we actually made the offer and we didn't have all the financial information together. So the offer we made was based on missing information. The mm -hmm. owners were actually a little bit offended by that and never responded to us. They took it off the market and we didn't hear anything back. A couple months later, we saw a center back on the market, similar price range. We put an offer in, it ended up being the same center. Um, at this point, they had given us some more information. We were able to actually come up with a deal at that point. But yeah, we actually lost that deal and were able to get it back later on. Okay, the way things are supposed to happen. Yeah. Right. As one door closes, another one opens up. As we just found recently, we're going to talk about that later on, uh, on deals. But So you guys are uh, students in our Child Care Genius University coaching program. Can you tell us why you decided to join us and what are you getting out of our one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions? I'm going to let, let you answer that one. <laughs> um, I, I think for us, like me personally, I have some business experience. I've been doing things on my own for a little bit. She has a lot of daycare experience, but knowing where we are now and where we want to go, it just made sense to partner with somebody who's already done it, right? You already know what needs to be done. And interesting enough, when I read your book, uh, Child Care Millionaire, that's when I started sort of realizing that, okay, like we're on the right track. We're doing some things right. But there's a lot of information that I don't know. There's a lot of things out there that we could probably be doing better and more efficiently. And so that's when we ended up connecting. And um, I think it just worked out for the best. 
So um, as far as what I'm getting out of it, it's really like learning and understanding how do you actually take and scale this particular business, right? Every business is a little bit different. And so, you know, in healthcare, I know, I know some things with the detailing and the other business. I mean, I know how to scale those things, but this is something that's completely different to me. So figuring out, you know, how do you do this while still staying within the rules and regulations is really important because there was a lot of ideas that I had and I ran by her and she's like, well, you can't do that because the state's going to shut that down. You can't do that because that's not allowed. Really <laughs> right. So being able to bounce those ideas off of you and sort of create a path where we want to go has been uh, incredibly helpful for us. That's great. What about you, Jennifer? Uh, I mean, you're, you're new at this, but you've been doing this a while, new on the ownership side, but you've been doing this quite a while. Um, and you were, you were a great student right from the beginning. So what, what do you, what do you feel that you get out of it? So I, I want to say, I forgot what book that we were reading. Um, I want to backtrack a little bit because I, what was the book that we read? It was basically saying like, if you know somebody or have somebody who not, how? Uh, who not, how it's a great book. Um, basically to sum it up, like work smarter, not harder, right? If you have a resource, use it. You know, I could sit there and, and I do have a lot of experience and, and we were reading a lot of books and I was listening to a lot of podcasts, but when you're actually working one-on-one -on -one with somebody, it's the benefit is like, that you can't even measure it, right? Like there's how many times have we been like, oh my gosh, we need to call Brian. Uh, <laughs> or I called Carol the one time when I, I had a little stipulation at the daycare between some employees. You know, it's like a lifeline uh, yeah. and it's quick and it's easy and it's somebody else's opinion that's outside um, that you can get. And it's again, like, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time, but not on the ownership for a long time. Uh, and you doubt yourself sometimes about some things. So it's nice having a resource at your fingertips uh, that you could just reach out. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And, and just to build on that, I mean, there's a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of decisions we could have made on our own that may have cost a lot of money. Right. So mm -hmm. you might think like, well, there's a cost to coaching. There's a cost to this. But we see it as an investment because if I'm able to pick up the phone and say, hey, Brian, what do you think about this? Right whatever, you know, that monthly investment is, right? I've just got my money's worth right there, as opposed to saying, I'm going to do this on my own. And well, now I just lost two employees. So that cost me 10 grand. It cost me countless time. You know what I mean? There's just, there's no measure to the amount of time and money you can actually save by investing in the right things. And so that's kind of how we look at it. I appreciate that. And, you know, a lot of times we people pick up, pick up, uh, they step over pennies to pick up, or pick over dollars to pick up pennies for that right. same thing. They don't want to, you know, invest in their own business. Um, and so you talk about a deal, you know, you were looking at expanding was part of your goals and you wanted to open a second center. And I remember you coming to me with a deal, you know, a few months ago and, you know, we, we looked at the numbers and it just, I just didn't like it for specific reasons. And so we ended up passing on that. And, and what happened after that? It's funny how one door closed. What happened? Not, not a week later. Well, so the original deal that we were in, um, that was a big, that would have been over a million dollars in, in terms of in, the initial investment. And the return is probably similar to what we're going to be seeing now, but that deal fell apart for a number of reasons. We ended up in another deal, which seemed, you know, financially much better. That was about $70,000 total investment. That would have been great, but we couldn't get a deal to stick with the, the landlord. So we actually made a deal and we made a, a deposit to the owner of the business, couldn't get a deal with the landlord. So everything kind of fell apart. And then what was it, maybe two or three months later, um, I got a call from a, uh, a broker friend of mine who's like, hey, a, a daycare just went on the market. It's part of an estate sale. You might want to just check it out. Okay. We said, okay. And uh, what, we just closed on it, what, two weeks ago now? So yeah, that worked out great. You know, I love it. And whenever a deal falls through, I never worried about it. Uh, we've had many fall through, even on a real estate side. We miss it. It's like, never worry about it because a better deal will come along. And if it's not meant to be, and maybe that one would have been a huge problem for you financially. So yeah. when one door closes, another one opens. I always say when God closes the door, he'll open a window. If you're not too stupid to go find the window, <laughs> you know, you that level headed part, you know, that sometimes we just, we're only looking for doors, right? Yeah. Stop right. looking for windows, you know, and that's the way we are. And, uh, you guys are so great about that. Now you have a second location. You're getting ready to open that up. And, you know, I know what your long-term goals are. And, you know, you, you guys are going to have a great future. To be in your really just finishing your second year of business, now to be a multi-center owner, 
and really learning to delegate, learning to put systems in place. And you're really upscaling and, you know, you're going to build a huge, large business that you're going to be able to pass on to your children. You know, you have young kids and um, it's, we're, we're very proud of what you've guys done in the short period of time we've worked together, just a couple months now. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. But I mean, a lot of it was, you know, because of, you know, reading your book really, and, and obviously us working together, you know, we probably wouldn't be in this situation. There's a lot of things that I may have done a little bit differently that may not have led to this outcome. So I have to thank you for, you know, your input on all those things. And you know what I love is I've been to your school. So I did a site visit and worked, uh, came and saw both of your schools. I went to, you saw the new one as well. So when I'm coaching you guys, I get to see things from a different lens that I actually have seen your schools. And I go to a lot of our client schools and, um, I, I just like the fact that I know where your office is and I know where you're talking about your pre-K classroom, your multi-purpose room and the room that you put your, uh, your school age kids in. I, I could picture it and close my eyes and see that your outside playground, the cool arc that you have in the back, in your back <laughs> playground. That's the most amazing playground. One of the most amazing I've ever seen. And when you're telling me things like that, I could see it. And when I'm coaching you and guiding you, I know that, Hey, your marketing is great because I saw your signage. You have one of the nicest signs I've ever seen to be on your school. So I know your marketing is good. I know you have good visibility. I saw the road traffic. And uh, that's what's the benefit of having a coach that really knows your business inside and out. And also with one-on-one, -on -one. I know your financials. I know where you guys are. So there's no secret. You don't hide anything from us. If you're having a problem, there's no no secret. So we really appreciate the, the candidness of what you guys are doing for sure. Thank you. So we know from experience that working with a spouse or a business partner isn't always easy. So how would you define your different lanes of responsibility? And are you pretty good with staying in your own lanes? Um, I take care of the daily operations of the daycare. Um, I'm there every day. Um, Noah takes care of besides besides the billing part. He takes care of the major financial stuff, the advertising, the important background stuff that I'm not doing. Um, I think we stay in our lanes pretty well. Yeah, I mean, and, and unless he comes up with a bogus idea, and I'm like, no, nope, not gonna work. Yeah. And then I'm like, no, nope, just go back to what you were doing. I have a lot of ideas. They're not always good. Um, <laughs> but I have them. So, you know, I think that she does a great job of running it day to day. There are certain things that um, I'll hear or I'll read that I think would be a good fit and I'll run that stuff by her. Um, and a lot of times we do implement new things on that way. But I think that the biggest thing is that I'm not there. So it's really easy for me to just sort of, I have a whiteboard right over here. It's got all the stuff that I need to do for the month, for the quarter, for the year on there. So I'm able to sit there and just say, okay, well, this is what I'm working on. I run everything by her so she knows what's going on and she fills me on what's going on day to day, but I'm not physically there. So I think it's a little bit easier to separate that stuff out. So the stuff that she needs to take care of, she's doing because she's there. I don't see a lot of it, so I can't react to it. I don't, I don't really necessarily know anything other than what she's telling me. And I think so far it's worked out fairly well. It, you guys have a unique situation because, you know, Noah, you work outside of the childcare business. So you're a full-time job on your own and you actually have other businesses too. So, but you still work very well together. You're probably one of the, the best couples I've seen as far as for the small amount time-wise, you contribute to Noah. You bring a lot of value into that time. And Jennifer, you listen very well to Noah, but you also know when to tell him to, okay, you can't do this because of. Um, right. I may have not have, Carol may not have been that way in the beginning. I might've been too, the, this is the way we're doing it. Yeah. And I drove us right off a cliff a few times uh, by doing it by not listening, thinking I knew more about business because I'm the man, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> she, you know, she kind of slapped me upside the head one time and said, I do know what I'm doing. Now she runs everything. And every time I get involved, I mess it up. So I know not to stay involved. <laughs> Let her rush. She has her lane. And what I think I analogy with the cars, she has her lane. I have mine. As long as we stay in our lanes, we don't bump into each other and crash. And if I want to ride in her lane, I ask her permission to go in there and we talk about things and sometimes she'll bring things back and forth to me. But in the end, I know she's a whole lot smarter about running daily day operations. I know finances is my forte. She, mm -hmm. She'll never, never claim to be the expert on the finances. I'll never claim to be the expert on everything else, which is a whole lot more. Finances are really the 1%. 
right. and the 99 percent is everything else yeah and um we're where we are today because of her and jennifer you guys are where you are because of you and we're just we're just along for the ride and uh but it takes that you can't get to 100 percent without the other one percent no yep. and you guys are a team and at the end of the day you both own 50 percent and you're, it's a team effort and you guys are doing it really, really well. The good news is, so we've been doing this 31 years. We've been a childcare business for 27. When you guys are at where we're at, you'll be five times farther than we were because we didn't have a coach. We'd have anybody helping us out. We had our second location two years after we got in as well, mm -hmm. but we had so many mistakes along the way because we just didn't know what we were doing. And that's why I wrote books to try mm -hmm. to hear, here's all the mistakes that I've made. So you don't have to make them. And, right. and go through heartaches and the problems that we've had to deal with. Yeah. And yeah, the issue that you had when you were talking about um you had issues with the landlord. So that was part of the we had one center, we were only open for two years. We had so many problems with the landlord, that's why we closed it. Oh wow. It, the center was doing fine and and you know, we had enrollment, we had staff but the landlords were just too hard to deal with so we closed it and then carol pressed me for years i said we need to start yeah. buying real estate and buying our buildings and yeah. i was reluctant to spend the money i just don't like debt so you know yeah. again we weren't on the same page from a financial perspective i wanted to be debt free yeah. i don't want to take on debt and buy buildings you know i would i wasn't thinking that way so again it slowed our growth and yeah. we'd be so much farther along if i my younger version of myself would have listened, you know, met the older version of myself. That's why when you guys to get to be our age, you know, you're going to be worth $50 million and you'll, you know, your kids will never have to worry about anything. Grandkid, you'll be, you'll be very well off. If you, if you go down a certain path that you right. want to go to and everything stays together and, and uh, you'll be, you'll be making a difference in the world. Your legacy will be so much greater than what we've done. And we're just proud to be a small part of, of helping you make a big legacy and a big drop in, into the mm -hmm. world. For sure. Yeah, the best part about that is we bought that building. We yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, so the land, yeah, it was actually a church, and the church board they were just evil people. They were they were oh, the worst sure. Christian were people we ever saw in our yeah. life. So uh, the church was having problems, and we saw for sale sign, and we bought it in our corporate name, so they didn't know it was us. Actually, oh, wow. ah, there you oh, go. Smart. So, yeah. We, once they got wind, it was us. It was too late, and we. Yeah. we I, was, it. I was like, I know that place is going to go for sale, and we're going to buy it when it does. Yeah, so we spoke <laughs> it into existence. You know, the power That's of awesome. visioning. I we knew that. we'd have it. We drove by it every day. The second of for sale sign up, full pipe offer, first day. We didn't want to have to compete against it. Yeah. And um. Yeah. That's how it's done. The, 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 the success is revenge. You you could always come back when you want something. That deal right now that fell through for you, Noah, you know, five years from now, you might own that for half the price. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's true. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, you know, I, I, if it wasn't for you, I may have done that deal. I mean, we were going back and forth, like, should we do it? Do we not do it? Uh, and I'm so happy we didn't because I'm just seeing like how that would have gone now. And, you know, the value that we're getting out of the property that we purchased. I mean, our total monthly expense is going to be less than half. Yeah. Of what it, be, it would have been in rent there and we're going to own yeah. it um, and that, that and that's a great point noah is that the, one of the reasons to have a coach and not that i know everything is i can see blind spots that maybe you don't see and always have a fresh set of eyes because what happens when you you get into a financial deal is you get emotionally attached to it and you see the building and you start seeing the employees you start seeing things and your mind will play tricks on you and you might see money that's really not there like, cause you want to make the deal. So sometimes you make the numbers work to what you think they are, not what they actually are. Right. So I'm going to come in as a neutral third party evaluator and just see, is this deal make financial sense? And I said, dude, you, you know, you're not going to make, you know, much profit here because of this, for this and this. Right. I said, there's better deals out there. Why don't we just wait for them? And then right away, another deal yep. popped right up. So and you wouldn't have been able to probably do both deals from a financial perspective. So it no. one had to fall through to get the other one. So it worked yeah. out great. Yeah. No, we would have been out of money by the time that we would have had to close on this one. It would have yeah, been. it works. It works out really well. Yeah. Well, so where do you see yourself in 10 years? So let's, let's look, let's look down the road a little bit. Any, any business goals long-term? What are you thinking? Oh. I don't, I don't know how many centers we're going to have in 10 years. Um, if it was up to Noah, we'd probably own two a year, <laughs> but that's, 
that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, but definitely, um, I, I don't know how many centers, but I would love to own more. Our goal personally is to try and um, we're about 30 minutes uh, from our house to our first center. So our goal is to kind of trickle down uh, town by town and, and put up a daycare as, uh, along the way so we get closer mm -hmm. to home. Yeah, so okay. there's um, there's several regions in our county. They're they're known by different things. You have the West End, um, we're sort of on the eastern end. You have the Mount Pocono area where we're kind of at now, and then there's an area a little bit south there. So our goal is to have at least one or two centers in each one of those regions. There's definitely a demand for it, mm -hmm. um, but we want to have like somewhat of a hands-on approach to our centers. We want to be able to have a reach and be able to be, you know, within driving distance to them. So our goal would be to at least sort of saturate that first. And then once we're there, um, just really pushing the quality and making sure that we're doing what we can to keep the quality up. And we do a lot with, you know, outreach, um, a lot of stuff in the community and a lot of things just at the state level, trying to improve childcare just in the state of Pennsylvania. So I'd like to at some point spend some more time doing that type of work. Um, and then at some point within, definitely within 10 years, be diversifying a little bit more, getting into some more real estate and some things. Again, we had done some real estate in the past and we had a rental that we sold um, to make this deal happen. Actually the first, the first one. So we'd but, like to be able to get back into some real estate again. And, we, and we're still new in the coaching. So we've only got two months in, so we really haven't gone. We're trying to get, you know, more close, close to the vest. Now we haven't really done any long-term strategic okay. planning, but we'll eventually get to that. We start really dialing in your two, five and 10 year goals. Um, and that'll come. We do those on our, on our workation trips to the Caribbean, which I hope you guys will come join us at some point that we can, uh, what we can really dive in and look long term and really think long term strategically as well. So, yeah, looking forward to that. So, what advice would you give to someone who's struggling in the childcare business? Somebody who's struggling, um, set small goals, tangible goals, um, find a coach, um, you know, because again, find somebody who's, who has the advice and the experience and that's already done it. Um, like Brian was saying, you're, you're that third party, that neutral party, um, that has, you're looking from the outside in. And I think that's the best, the best advice that I have. Um, you know, don't, you know, it's hard. Like you, when you look at the big picture, sometimes it's very overwhelming, um, so to just kind of bring it down um, and look at step by step uh, and small goals, reach it and then go from there. That's my advice. I don't know if yeah. you want to add anything to that or if you um, have something different. No, I do think I think the biggest piece is just find somebody that's been where you are and gotten through it. Right. Because you're going to get stuck a lot. So having either a coach or some sort of mentor, somebody that can help you, I think is important. And then. Um, in terms of like looking at your own progress, I think it's really easy to get overwhelmed. There's so many negative things that get thrown at you when you're in business. You have, you know, things from the state, you have parent complaints, you might get a bad review online or something like that. I think it's important to take a step back and sort of look at where did you start and where are you now? And sort of don't forget to like celebrate those little tiny victories, all those things that you've done along the way, because it's really easy to feel defeated. Um, I mean, for us, when we look back, like you know, all these deals fall through, it would have been really easy to just give up and say, you know, what, we're never going to get a deal. We're not going to worry about it. But we looked at it as, okay, well, what did we learn coming through this, right? Like we know all, like, I didn't even know what a public water system was. I could tell you pretty much 90% of the things you need to know about it now. Right. And that's, that's super yes. important. So like we learned some really valuable lessons along the way that if we, you know, truthfully, if we would have had this deal go through and let's say we made a bunch of money on this deal. Um, that first building, it went great. And we've got, let's say a million dollars in cash. I might've gone out and bought a huge building thinking, okay, we're going to make a 400 person center. And if I didn't know anything about that water system, I would have bought a half million dollar building that I couldn't even use. Yep. So just learning those little things along the way are going to be so invaluable. So we just sort of look at it like that. Like that wasn't a loss, right? We didn't, we didn't lose all the money we sunk into the deal. We actually saved a million, a million two in, in, in losses that we would have suffered if we would have bought that building. So you know what not to do next time. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Right. Experience is a good teacher. And the good thing about having a coach is you, you learn from the mistakes of another person. 
yeah. and reading books and being in a coaching group where you hear from other people as well, um, learning from the mistakes of others. I mean, you could make mistakes yourself and cost you a million dollars or you could join a coaching group, you know, and pay a fraction of that and learn from other people's mistakes. I wish I had that same opportunity. Uh, it would just have propelled my business so much sooner. So, right. And so I think, I think a positive attitude has a lot to do with it too. I know I have struggled uh, to maintain a positive attitude at points. And Noah is my backbone. That's like, have you ever not gotten through something? And I always have that. We always <laughs> have found a way. Every and time. he's, he's my um, optimist. And um, it really does like your attitude makes a huge difference. So it, I don't know. I wouldn't be here without him. I would have, I would have probably walked away at some point and been like, I'm not doing this. Um, yeah. But I've definitely, again, reading, using your resources and having somebody, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, like Noah's my, my cheerleader, you know, like he's always like, you can do this. So having somebody that's there to cheer you on um, definitely a way to get through those, those tiny struggles. Yeah, we mentioned this in last week's podcast, we had talked about this kind of the same issue is, you know, you're, you're her optimist and it goes both ways. And it, the secret is to never quit on the same day. Yeah, so sure. when she's having a bad day, you build her up. When he's having a bad day, you build them up. And if you both quit on the same day, then you're in trouble. So just never have a bad day together or try not to have a bad day together. <laughs> just always be each other's cheerleaders. And that's the key to success in working together in this business. And if you're a spouse that was not involved at all in the business, you could still be a cheerleader behind the scenes. And, yeah. and I encourage you to really get to know what your spouse does all day in the childcare business. You would kind of be floored. It's one of the hardest running one school is the hardest job out there. I think it's much harder than being a teacher. There's so many different things you're coordinating. You're, you're, you're dealing with teachers yelling at you, parents yelling at you, kids yelling at you, and you're, and sometimes your own spouse and kids, your own kids, the only dog's going to be barking at you when you get home. So everybody's coming at you sometimes and you don't realize the, the stresses you have. Um, so if you're a spouse, it's just be a supportive person and get to know what that person goes through on a daily basis. I think you'll have a greater respect for the business. I know uh, when um, Carol came in and had to step in as a director for a year, you know, maybe 10 years ago, and I worked in the office. So I really got to see Carol in a different setting. You know, we're home all day. And then I get to see her being a director in the same building I'm working at. So we had to work in that capacity for like a year. And I got to really get a lot of respect to see how hard she really worked. Because <clears throat> nothing's harder than having to be a director and an owner in the same place <laughs> while running everything. It was really yeah. hard. Wouldn't recommend it. And then that's exactly where she's at now. And I mean, the reality is I couldn't do it. I don't have enough knowledge to be able to run that end of things. So, I mean, this doesn't exist without her. So, you know, I, I would want to do it. No, I mean, I, I, <laughs> no I, honestly, if it came down to it, I mean, I would, if she was like, I don't want to do this anymore, I would sell it. There's no way I could step yeah, in. Yeah, I, I could not. I could not do it. I, I could not teach the kids. I just don't have the patience. God did not give me the patience gene. <laughs> um, and so I don't, I really don't know how teachers do it. They're just an amazing gift people. They're just, they're just, God put this special heart in certain people that can and do it with children all day long. I'm like, Oh my God, I wish I had that patience. You know, oh. I barely have enough patience with my own grandchildren sometimes, <laughs> you know? And uh, Oh yeah. I, I'm with you there. I mean, I'm telling you the teachers that we have, they're so good. And like, we let them know every day. Like I, and, like they just amaze me. I tell them, I'm like, this like, I totally amazed. I, I don't know. I don't even have words for it. It's just the, the things that they do, the things that they put up with. They are amazing. And I, I tell them all the time and I tell Carol all the time, you know, how amazing she is. And, and, uh, and she is, it's just amazing what they can do. Yeah. You know, how, the hardest working woman I know sitting right next to me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so what's one of your business goals for 2023 what, together, personal business? What, what are you trying to, what's one thing you'd like to get done in 23? You want to start? No, you can start. Well, so she I'm may not, not she may not agree with me, but no, I, because <laughs> I, I, you know, you know what I'm going to say. She's going to, she knows I'm going to say, uh, I'd like to start working on a, a third center. But the reality is, but before we even get to that point, uh, we really want to optimize center number two. We want to get it up to the same standard or as close as possible to the first center that we have running. That's my goal. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's my goal I have written down. And 
And no, and it's true. I mean, we want to get it fully staffed. We want to make sure that the culture and values from our building as our business gets transferred over there. We want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, my hope is that within the first six months uh, to nine months, we can do that. And by the end of the year, we can actively start looking for a third center to sort of repeat the process with. So that's kind of important. Well, I mean, I applaud you, Jennifer, because the second school is the hardest school to open. Now, granted, you're just getting ready to open it. So you're, you're not quite there yet. So it, as far as, you know, you actually running things to be next week, you're going to be in the, in the hot seat. Most people only do one center, 90, 93, 94% of owners never do a second school. And the reason being, it's so hard to let go of the first one. And I applaud you for being willing to step back because you got to let go of your baby over here and go build a new baby and do it at the same time. So you have to start letting go and delegating, right. which is a hard thing to do. I'm fortunate that I have a director in place that I trust. She's also my best friend. Um, and I, I do, I trust her. I've taught her everything that I know and I'm, I'm confident in her. Um, I'm still nervous, but I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. And I've got to meet her and she's a rock star. So I know. And, um, and she, she was taught well, cause you taught her, her well. And that's the secret to delegation and the secret to only multiple schools is having the right team in place. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. Great. great. I great. think it's hard to find somebody who's going to treat your business the way that you would. And I mean, I really feel that she does. I mean, she gets up early every morning. She gets everything done. She needs to get done. If something happens, if there's an issue, she calls us. She yes. takes care of stuff for us without us asking. She's fantastic. She's great. Yeah, that's that's the key. Good people, yeah. for sure. So we have a mindset question for you. What's your favorite relaxing activity to do as a couple? Oh, my answer? I guess. <laughs> Staring at me. Um, well, we recently put in a hot tub. So um, we, we try and get into our hot tub as much as possible like four times a week. Um, and we have a nice cover on it, so we don't care about the weather. Um, <laughs> and then we also like to read together. We, we have an audio book that we normally pick out together. Uh, Noah normally does research and sends me a whole bunch to pick from. And I kind of go through them and I pick one. I'm like, oh, this one sounds great. And uh, so we listen to those separately and we can talk about them. And then uh, we also keep, we always have a, a book by uh, by our bed at night. So we try, that tends to be a little bit less. Sometimes it's only a paragraph. Sometimes it's a few pages. It depends on how tired we are. Uh, we're both very busy, but we try and get something in before we go to bed. Other than that. I mean, we do vacations and stuff like that. It's but like hard. The daily hard. stuff. Yeah. The hot tub and the, and the reading is something that we enjoy. It's relaxing for us. And we talk a lot. I mean, so there's times where you just want to sit in the hot tub. You don't want to talk at all. You just want to relax together. And, and that's something that we get to do. And then the reading goes, we get to sort of talk and, and have some conversations, which is nice because you don't always get to have, you know, a conversation that's not related to, to work or, or business sometimes. So it's nice to be able to disconnect and do that. Yeah. We talked about this. I think last week's podcast is having time with no business talk is very important. Either a day of the week, maybe Sunday or a time of the day, we kind of just turn off the business and it's very important. And also your kids are young. Yeah. So don't be so obsessed with the childcare business. Like we were early on and, um, and literally, you know, the children become part of the business and you're working there every weekend working at it. And it, it becomes an obsession and you lose a lot of that time. So find a balance. Balance is important. Yeah. I think we've gotten a little better about that. I think in the beginning we it were was, so, yeah obsessed with being there and it, I felt like I was there every weekend and I was doing all this stuff but I think we've we've come to uh like Sunday yeah. Sunday's is family day you yeah. know um that's just a routine it's always been that routine but I think we've gotten better at kind of relaxing and you know what I made think. the difference of <laughs> putting somebody in the office that is capable was I think the most important, probably the best thing we've ever done because yeah. even though it, it there was a cost to that, right? There was an expense to doing that. It freed up so much time that we could just get back because she'd be in the office all day and then, okay, well, the state's coming. We got to paint. We got to do this. We got to do that. And 
you know, there was nobody overseeing anything. She was, it was her for everything. And, you know, I was working, you know, basically seven days a week. Cause I'd get off work. I'd run up there. I was making repairs. I was doing all this other stuff. And so having somebody to come in and be able to take over a lot of that responsibility and let us focus on the important things that we need to focus on was really, very helpful. So. Yeah. Don't be afraid to make that investment and buy your life back. Yeah. You know, it's a small price to pay now for more time with your kids. Now it's, it is a small price to pay and you'll look back and thank yourself down the road. One of the mistakes we made early on, um, but now we're trying try to teach other people not to make those same mistakes. You just you know, don't know what you don't know. And we're hard workers and yeah. four of our five kids work in our business. So we must've done okay. Yeah. As far as them being an influence, they still work for us in our childcare business That's or in our real estate business. So I, I guess we did. Okay. And they all, they all turned out good. No, that's great. <laughs> so, well, Jennifer and Noah, thank you so much for joining us in the Child Care Genius Podcast. We know you've touched a lot of lives today, making a difference, and uh, we hope everything goes well for you in Pennsylvania. We look forward to seeing your growth, and we love the fact that you're working with us. And we, we can't wait to uh, can't wait to be on a beach with you guys. Uh, yeah. It was nice being in Pennsylvania with snow, but I'd rather be on a beach and warm. So we'll, we got to work on that. Us yeah. too. Us too. All right, no, guys, thank you, really thank you so much. It. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Child Care Genius Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. Don't forget to visit our website at childcaregenius.com to see a list of services we offer to help grow your child care business. Until next time, thank you for being a part of the Child Care Genius community.